These are the rules of my house. My father found them in a butter container when we first moved in, and three years later, we are still following them. I live in the summer house of my family home. It is essentially my bedroom. I loved every second of it. Rule number one. Never leave the house after midnight. If you must, do not make a sound, especially no singing, music, humming, jingling of keys, or talking. Rule number two. Never forget to lock up. The shed may be open, shut it, and don't look inside. Rule number three. Lights will flicker when you turn them off. Do not leave the room until the flickering has stopped. Rule number four. If you see a person in a corner of your eye, look at it directly in the eyes and wait until it disappears. Rule number five. If you see a man hanging in the living room, leave and shut the door, lock up and go for a walk. He should be gone when you get back. Rule number six. Never leave a candle burning, not even for a second while you're using the bathroom. If it can burn, it will. Rule number seven. When you get halfway up the garden, look at the moon. If it's full or waxing, you're safe. Anything else, refer to rule eight. Rule eight. If anything goes wrong, Run to the summer house, lock the door, without jingling the keys. They hate the noise. And close all blinds. Put on a film and watch it entirely. Rule number 9. Fall asleep with a video on. It will be switched off at the plug by morning. Ignore this. That means you please them. Rule number 10. The fridge is never to be turned on nor open. Either will attract them. Refer to rule 8 if you can. Rule number 11. If there is a light on in the house, go inside and turn it off. Refer to rule 3. Rule number 12. You will need to drink during the night. Your throat will get scratchy and dry. Only carbonated beverages are to be drank after 12. Rule number 13. Any open containers will be dangerous after 11 p.m. Ensure all lids are firmly screwed on. Rule number 14. Moths and spiders will appear around 1 a.m. Catch and release every single one. Do not fall asleep until you do this. Rule number 14. Take a pill with your name on it. Make sure your name is spelled correctly. If it is not, throw them over your left shoulder. Rule number 16. You may see graffiti on the sides of the house. The hooded figure drawing it is not friendly, and it must not see you under any circumstances. If it does, Climb underneath the storage unit and close your eyes. If you're lucky, it won't remember where you were. Rule number 17. If you wake up between 2 to 4 a.m., do not open your eyes. Do not open your eyes. If you fall asleep with a mask on, do not trust it. Rule number 18. If you feel nauseous, light a candle. If it goes out on its own, go back to sleep. Rule number 19. If the bin is full, start a new one. If the place is not clean, it will attract them. Rule number 20. Do not eat anything in this room. It will taste like mold and it will make you bedridden or upwards of a week. 
rendering you unable to complete these rules. Rule number 21. There have been three suicides, two murders, and five deaths in this house, and the previous tenants do not recall ever living here. Document all rules and all sightings and pray the next tenants listen. A few months ago, I made a mistake. I broke rule 17. I always set an alarm for 7 a.m. to make sure I don't open my eyes before then. But this fatal night, I had convinced myself that I simply snoozed my alarm and I opened my eyes. My breath quickly became shallow and labored. I couldn't breathe. I remember thinking that this is the end. I screwed up. I broke a rule. This is it. My eyes adjusted to the darkness to find a bucket on my chest. It was filled with an off green colored fluid dripping in from somewhere. The dripping slowly neared to a stop and my eyes adjusted to a semi normal level of vision. I glanced up at the ceiling and my eyes became glued to the creature. A mass of dead flies, moths and spiders. The ooze dripping from its protruding hip bone directly into the bucket. It crudely resembled a young child with no facial features but would appear to be a complete skeleton. I blinked hard hoping that this was just another one of those figures you can stare at until they disappear. It was not. It lunged at me and picked up its bucket. I could finally breathe. It picks up an amount of the sludge and applies it like moisturizer on its body, regenerating the areas where its skeleton was on show. Its legs were stuck to the ceiling, its upper body hanging upside down from the ceiling. I need to get rid of it. It was toying with me and has regenerative abilities. There was no way I could possibly outsmart it. I shut my eyes tightly as possible as it replaced its bucket on my chest and I hear the nauseating dripping noise again. As my chest grows heavier, I somehow fall asleep. I'm not religious, but the day after I thanked every god I could think of. I had woken up and I was seemingly unharmed, other than a cracked rib. I told my parents and they smiled. They must like you, my dad said, unchalantly. I didn't feel lucky. I didn't feel much at all. Of course, I was grateful. Anyone would be. But why didn't they kill me? Why did they choose to save me? Am I more valuable alive to them? I didn't think I'd ever find out. I hope to move out soon. The previous tenants have been sectioned under the Mental Health Act recently, apparently suffering from paranoia. They sent us a cease and desist order after we asked them how long they lived here. According to the landlord's bank, all of their checks never existed. There is no evidence they ever were here even though they left family photos in a box in the attic and the landlord still has the money. My parents act like this is normal. They don't seem concerned at all. My brother seems unbothered. There's something off with them. I hope my summer house keeps me sane. But I can't help but feel this is the only good way to live. Maybe I should join them in the house. Maybe you should join us too. The house knows best. They know best.